How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to 2019 Cycles. You can see it on my screen. I'm going to go ahead and ask everyone, make sure that you can hear me okay. If you could post where you're from in the chat window, uh, the chat's going to be over to the right. That way I know where everyone is coming from and that I know my microphone is working. Kyle in Chattanooga, Nicole, Chicago, Illinois. Illinois, Rob, West Virginia, Jason, Tucson, Arizona. Wow, Ryan, Birmingham. We have a lot of people on. Fort Benning, Sean, Trampas, South Carolina. Moonville, Moonville. All right, and we got uh, Ash from Jonesboro, Arkansas. England, yes, I was hoping we would get international. Great. Ireland, awesome, awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> All right, we got everyone from all around the world. I am really pumped and excited to get into these uh, the 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 presentation today. We're going to be covering a lot of stuff. Kind of the the promise, you know, is we're going to go over how to get stronger, hard to kill, in superhuman in less time. Kind of as the question mark there, because that is uh, something new that we're introducing this cycle. It's called three block, so less time, less training. It's only thirty minutes worth of training. I know a lot of people have questions about it, so we're going to cover that. We're going to cover a lot of things today, challenges, uh, the new fit week, all sorts of stuff, so hang around. It's going to be a lot of good information today, a little bit different. If you've been on these webinars in the past, today's going to be a little bit different. I'm going to challenge, challenge you a little bit more up front, and as everyone knows, we do start with some announcements, so I'm going to make, make uh, those really quick and get through those. Uh, that way, we can get to all the other great information going on today. Uh, so let's get started with some updates. So the first update I have is the team. I, I don't feel like I do a great job explaining all of this, um, you know, or or introducing everyone properly at all times. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. You guys know me, Jared Moon, CEO and founder of Into Three Fitness and Garage Gym Athlete. I am the guy who does most of the programming. I used to, it used to be all of the programming. Now it's most of the programming, as the team is growing slowly here. Most of you also know Joe. Joe is uh, the chief barbell officer, chief operations officer, whatever you want to call him. He does a lot of the behind the scenes work. He's actually here today in the chat. If you have any questions, he'll be answering those for you uh, because I'm going to be focusing on the presentation and I will get to any questions later on. So Joe is here and he'll help you out with whatever you need if any questions do come up. Uh, now, if any technical issues happen, you can't hear me something you know, let me know. Sometimes it could be on my end, but most of the time you're just going to have to leave and come back. That's the best thing that we've found. Uh, so that's Joe. He helps with programming. He helps with customer support. He helps literally with everything as a small business, you know, small team. We're all doing a little bit of everything. You know, Ashley, Ashley is our head nutrition coach, uh, chief transformation officer. She's helping people with that. Uh, currently on maternity leave for a little bit longer, uh, but we are super pumped to have her on the team. Kyle, these are the two latest additions. So Kyle, you guys probably know him. Uh, he's actually on the webinar today as well. He started just as one of our athletes and really got after it, lost a ton of weight and just had this motivation drive to, to do this thing, to do fitness. You know, he's a youth minister full time. He's helping us out part time, uh, but he's been helping as, with coaching and just a dedicated, driven individual. Uh, you know, we're like, okay, well, you're gonna need to get a certification and go through this nutrition certification, all this stuff. And he just like knocked it out faster than anything I've ever seen. Very motivated guy. I'm uh, very dedicated, glad to have him on the team. And then VD, we just brought him on. Some of you guys saw me and announce it in the Facebook group. Uh, VD is, has been around into three fitness for a very long time. He's gone through the EO3 certification, has a lot of other certs to his name, and he's actually in charge of the shred track this cycle. He's done all the programming. Uh, he'll be your coach and leader in that regard, and uh, very glad to have him join us for this cycle as well. All right, guys, let's get into it a little bit more. The Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. If you are not subscribed to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast, that's what you need to go do. You can do it right now if you want to. Uh, it's wherever you listen to a podcast. We have the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast, primarily interviewing our own athletes uh, about you know their training, their struggles, real life, what it actually takes to be a Garage Gym Athlete. And a lot of you on the webinar are on this upcoming season. We're dropping that 10 new episodes, January 2nd, 2019. So right after we kick off the new year, 
you'll get the new season. And we're also introducing a few new people. You know, this garage gym community really is a big community. So we're going to have uh, some people who aren't our athletes on there as well, but people are doing awesome things in the garage gym world. So be looking forward to that. Subscribe if you aren't already, and we'll have more announcements about when all that drops. All right. I always announce this when we're getting towards the end of a cycle. So you know that you it is it is time for PRs or PR week, fit week, whatever you want to call it. We're about to start doing some testing. And our rules are you post it, the video of your PR in our Facebook group, and we ship you a shirt for free. Uh, and I always say we want you to get the black shirt. So if you hit a PR using our training, next week is testing. If it happens, shoot us the video in the Facebook group and we will be sending you the black PR shirt. Now, a lot of you have been around for a long time and you might be bumping up on the five PRs. If you hit five PRs, you get the red PR shirt. We've actually sent way more of these than I thought that we would. Uh, and we've sent hundreds of the black PR shirts. So it's been really, really cool. And guys coming up on fit week, don't be intimidated. Make sure your form's good. Submit those videos and get the PR shirt. We want to send them uh, send as many as we can, really. It's awesome to celebrate your progress and your PRs as much as possible. All right, that's it. Quick announcements. That was it. So now we're going to get into the challenge. I have a challenge for everybody for the month of January. And I think it's a very simple challenge and very doable. And I want everyone to commit to doing this. I think that it's 100% possible and really could change the results you're seeing. Uh, how fast you see, how fast you recover. It, it's going to be really, really awesome. But let me explain a little bit more. So this is the January challenge. As you know, I'm a big fan of The One Thing by Gary Keller. It's it's a book. Uh, if you haven't read that book, I highly recommend you you know download the audio book or, or read it old school style. Anyway, what he talks about in that book is the lead domino, finding out the one thing that's going to you know, that you can work on or you can hammer away at that's going to take care of everything else. Now, if you're already training with us and you have some training done and you are currently training, whether you're going to be starting on the three block track or continuing on hard to kill, whatever it might be, you are already doing some good things. So what is the lead domino that's really going to push you and propel you forward in 2019? And I came up with the Paul Challenge. Now, the name is kind of awful. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm not a huge fan of it. But uh, the reason we're calling it the Paul Challenge is because it's a protein and water challenge. That is it. Absolutely nothing else. Very simple, very doable. But let me explain a little bit more. And first, let me explain why. So we all know that we need protein, right? Protein is very, very important in our lives. And what I've found having worked with a lot of our athletes on nutrition that people really struggle when we're doing like full on macro plans, people always struggle to get enough protein and they don't really know why it's so important or why we're trying to consume so much. Um, so I'll, I'll tell you how much to consume and, and why we're doing it, but let's just get on the why of protein. So a high protein diet reduces hunger, helping you eat fewer calories. It, there's improved function of weight regulating hormones a high protein intake can help you gain muscle mass and strength and can reduce muscle loss when losing weight. Eating more protein has been shown to reduce cravings and desire for late night snacking. A higher protein intake has been shown to boost your metabolism significantly, helping you burn more calories. And several studies have shown that a higher protein intake can lower blood pressure. And some studies also show improvements in other risk factors for heart disease. Protein is so important. It's the building blocks of our lives, of our muscles. Um, you know, they're, so it's a, you know, protein is packed with amino acids. Our body can't produce most of those amino acids. And so we need it. You absolutely need to be filling your body with protein, these building blocks. It can also help you lose more fat and help you keep it off for the long term. What am I talking about there? Well, there are actually some studies done. Everything I'm, I bullet, bulleted here uh, are based off of studies, not some random, my, you know, randomly my thoughts on protein. But there are some studies about people who consume more protein. Um, they keep their weight, their weight off longer. And it, they, they don't really know why, but they think it has to do with the satiating uh, you know, ability of protein. So you're feeling fuller. You're, you're more satisfied. Uh, helping you. And then it was typically around 20 to 30% of their calories consumed in protein. 
uh, was that, that kind of magic marker there. And eating more protein can help you recover faster, especially after, after you've been injured. So two different studies. Obviously, protein is going to help a lot with uh, recovery in general, right? So you need those building blocks, like I said, to build up your muscles, to build up your, your body again after breaking it down because that's what we're doing in training. And then if you're injured, you should really be consuming a lot of protein in, in as many different forms as you can. All right, now water. I could go on probably like 10 different pages of bullet points on water and why that's important, why hydration is important. Uh, but let's just talk about, you know, why, you re why it really matters as an athlete and a human being in your day-to-day -day life. So just a few bullet points here. So water, losing as little as 2% of your body's water content can significantly impair physical performance. That doesn't take a lot. A little bit of sweat. Uh, you sweat in the nighttime and you also don't drink a lot of water you know, when you're sleeping, uh, probably none, unless you wake up in the middle of the night to drink some water. So you need to really get after your water intake as soon as you wake up in the morning or else you're rolling into the day already impaired physically. Very important going into fit week, guys. You need to be hydrated. And then mild dehydration can impair energy levels and mood and lead to major reductions in memory and brain performance. So if you are feeling down, you are your brain doesn't feel like it's working correctly, you're like, yes, I need to get as much coffee as I can in me this morning. Well, how about you try getting like 30 ounces of water within the first hour of waking up and see how you start to feel over the course of a week, a month of doing that and making a you know, good hydration, a part of your daily routine. You're going to see your physical performance and your mental performance, performance, performance improve, trying to combine those words, improve just from drinking water, guys. It's so simple. And then drinking adequate uh, amounts of water, aid in digestion and weight loss. Yeah, I need to drink some water, right? All right, so the January Paw Challenge, protein and water. So this is it. So what I'm saying here. I want everyone to download it, and I'm not going to give you any options here. I'm just going to say My Macros Plus because that's what I use, and I think it's available for Android like everyone. So My Macros Plus is the app. You can download that, and right at the top, so what you can do is you can set your macros for the day, and I want you to go set your macros for zero grams of carbohydrates, zero grams of fat, and only track your protein. So you're only going to put the amount of protein you want to start tracking. Yes, we could get into the weeds of why you, sh you know, why you should or could be on a complete macronutrient plan. But what I found is the more complex or more things, more obstacles we throw in your way, the less likely you are to succeed. So the month of January, you know, watch the carbohydrates, make sure they're clean, stay away from processed foods, eat your vegetables, all that stuff applies. But the only thing I want you to try and track is your protein over the month of January. And you're going to say, ask how much protein? What should be 0.8 grams to one gram per pound of lean body mass. So, you know, what's lean body mass? Well, you kind of have to know your body fat percentage um, because if you are overweight, you don't want to just be basing it off your weight. Uh, so you're going to, you know, whatever your body fat percentage is in pounds, you would subtract that. Now, if that's too complicated, a good rule of thumb is just to go anywhere from 0.6 to 0.8 times your body weight that works out 99% of the time. And if it doesn't work out for you, you know, let me know, shoot us a message. That's what we're here for to help you find that number. Um, but you know, you can, you, and you can even go up to, you know, a gram per pound of body weight if you're doing a lot of weightlifting. So that's how much protein I want you to track. And you'll put that number after you calculated it in the, my macros plus app, simple stuff. And then that's all you're going to worry about tracking for now. Don't worry about the fats. Don't worry about the carbohydrates. Let's make sure you're getting enough protein and just see if everything else works itself out. Because you might want less carbohydrates if you're eating enough protein because of the power of protein. You're going to recover better. You're going to sleep better. Everything's going to be better. The, you know, all the weight loss and growth hormone, uh, you know, regulation is going to be there because you're consuming enough protein. So just do it. Uh, I won't beat a dead horse here consume protein challenge challenge accepted by me who else is going to uh, accept the challenge let me know in the chat if you are going to start tracking your protein awesome lots of people great i you know it's a simple one guys and we don't need to over it we're going to do one thing track protein 
And then in the My Macros Plus app, there's also a way to track water. It's right next to the macros at the top. And so you're going to start tracking your water every day. So these are the only two things we're done after this. I don't need you to do anything else, track anything else. I need you to do the training. I need you to track your protein and track your water. And the best starting starting point for water is 50% of your body weight in ounces. So if you weigh 180 pounds, you'd start at 90 ounces of water. And you you obviously can adjust that. That's the starting point. If you, you know, sweat a lot in a training session, there are different climates, different humidity levels. You're going to want to probably have a little bit more than that based off of your training. And like I said, time of year, duration, um, whether you're inside, outside, a lot of things to factor in there, but that should be your starting point, your minimum every single day. And it should be pretty easy for you to hit. Recommendations, get a water bottle and just fill it up and know how many of those water bottles you need to drink to be able to hit that goal. And that one gets really easy. And again, if you wake up in the morning first thing and down 20, 25, 30 ounces of water right off the bat, right off the bat, you're going to be basically taken care of. It's going to be very easy for you there moving forward. And that's it, guys. I want you to do this for a month. Don't worry about anything else diet related. Don't worry about the training. Just do the training. Put in as many consistent sessions as you can and see what happens. I really think that you'll be amazed if you just do these two things for an entire month. I really think it could really change your life, especially if you've been eating you know, not enough protein and being like mildly dehydrated for an ongoing time period, you're probably way off your game and you don't even know it. Uh, and that's just both mentally and physically. All right, let's get into training. Normally I say this for the end, but I wanted to hop right into it today and talk about the new cycles. So everyone on, uh, let me know which track you are currently on. And if you are thinking about switching, uh, before beforehand. Lots of shreds and H2K. All right. All right. We have a lot of uh, a lot of variation here, so we don't have too many on just one track, which is good. All right, guys. Awesome. Well, let's talk about what's going to be different, what's changing, what's uh, what it's going to look like this time around. The first thing I want to explain and just hit on before we do hop into the training is we are all other guys, other girls. That's the term that we use around here. So the reason I'm prefacing me getting into the training is because I'm actually going to kind of show you a little bit of how we do the programming or at least the the overview process of what we're thinking when we do the programming. But I don't want anyone to get overwhelmed because none of you need to know this stuff uh, to the level that we and the other coaches and programmers here need to know it. But I just want to show you guys kind of what our thought process is because we're building athletes. This is real training. It's not elite training. We're not trying to send people to the Olympics or, you know, into the CrossFit games. This, this is training for real people, but it is training. We're not hitting some random wad. There's no like mindless activity. Uh, you know, you basically walking 10,000 steps is what I equate almost every other type of programming out there if you're not actually thinking it out. So I want to show you the behind the scenes. But again, don't get overwhelmed. There are people at every level of fitness here in the program, people who are just starting out, people who haven't been training for a long time. And then there are also people who've been training with us two and three years, uh, which is which is really awesome. So let's get into it. And if you guys have any questions, let me know. All right. So I always like to use this example of garage gym athlete being the vehicle, especially for your 2019. So garage gym athlete is going to take you where you want to go in 2019. Now, how do we do that? Well, the training is the gas pedal. This is the example I always use. Training is your gas pedal. And we are going to give you the best form of acceleration that we can with our training so long as you are consistent. So our training is the gas pedal. You slam the gas pedal down by just engaging in our training on a daily basis. But we both know you hop in your car and you hit the gas pedal. That's not going to be very beneficial if you're not at least thinking about the steering wheel, right? So the steering wheel is your nutrition. And for the month of January, like I said, I don't want anyone. I mean, if, if you're pretty committed in the nutrition world and you can 
you know, manip manipulate your diet and track all sorts of things, or you have something that you love and enjoy, and you're already doing that, well, keep doing that. But for everyone else who may struggle with nutrition, which I know is a lot of people, in the month of January, I'm only asking you to do two things, and that is to track your protein and track your water, do our training. I'm not worried about other things nutrition-wise because everything I look at is big picture. I'm looking at how can we help you in 2019. So the month of January, we're going to focus on those two things. February, we'll talk a, lot, a little bit more, March a little bit more. And you can add as much complexity as you like, but I know the, the more simple that we can keep it, the better. So nutrition is going to get you where you want to go with a steering wheel. So the, if your destination is losing weight, if your destination is gaining muscle, if you're your destination is maintaining, that's all going to be your nutrition. So slam on the gas pedal, but then focus on your nutrition to make sure that you're going to get where you want to go. All right. So our training, this is the question I get a lot. It's like, what should I do? Like I normally introduce all the different tracks and what we're doing for the next cycles. And then people are like, well, what should I do? And so I'm going to help you answer some bigger questions. or I'm going to ask you to answer some bigger questions first before I show you each new cycle, that way you can make the best informed decision for you. So answer these questions. Like I said, the training will take you wherever you want to go, but where do you actually want to go? So is that a new PR? Is that losing a certain amount of weight? Where do you want to go? Now, where do you need to go? Now, do you have some sort of health issue that me means that you probably should lose weight or you should do something else? Do you need to go a certain place? Or if you're in the military, you're a first responder, something like that, are you trying to focus on getting strong on the strength track, but maybe you, maybe you should be working on getting a little bit faster in your run times or, or doing more push-ups? You know, where do you need to go versus where you want to go? And a very, very important question, especially after I kind of tell you a little bit more about the next cycles, what's going to be the most fun for you? Like, where are you going to have the most fun? Because we both know the only program that you're going to do, the only program that you'll stick to is the one that you're going to have fun doing because that, that's the best version of any programming, right? If you're, if you're having fun on a daily basis, you know, you're trying to improve your skills, get better at something, you're going to stick to it. Your stick rate is going to be so much higher if you're having fun. So once I explain kind of the goals and what we're doing in each cycle, where, just think to yourself, where am I going to have the most fun? Because it's all good training, guys. It's all good training. There's not really one track better than the other. It all just depends on your goals. Then lastly, will you actually arrive at your destination? And I bring this one up because we're introducing the three block track this cycle. It's, it's brand new. You know, it's 30 minutes of training. So if you're like, wow, well, the hard to kill track looks like it would be the most fun. But in all honesty, I only have 30 minutes of training worth you know, 30 minutes in my day to, to devote to training. So maybe you should be on three block, even though hard to kill would be the most fun because you want to actually arrive. You don't want to get beat down by not completing training sessions or, you know, beating yourself up mentally because you feel like you're not uh, completing what you should be doing. So will you arrive? And so that's also a question you need to answer. If, if hard to kill or shred has too much conditioning in it that you don't really enjoy doing, would you really arrive at meeting your goals if you would just do the strength track instead of one of those, you know, my, my goal here is to not have anybody get caught up in any sort of, uh, you know, shiny object syndrome. I really want you to succeed. So I want you to know where you want to go. Some of you need to go somewhere. That's not going to be most everyone. And then I want to make sure that you're going to end up where you want to go and that you're going to have fun in the process. So really, those are the questions you need to answer when you're talking about which track to choose. After that, you know, you know, if you have a specific goal or whatever, you want to drill down a little bit further. Like I said, we're always here to answer those questions. Uh, but these are the big overview questions I think you should answer. And we will get you there. Our training will get you wherever you want to go. So we have the strength track, the shred track, hard to kill and three block, and also the no gear track. And I'm going to explain all those a little bit more. So Let's start with strength. So what we're doing uh, on the strength track this time around, if you were here last year, beginning 2018, we did something called OGC. And it was called the Other Guy Conjugate Method. If you guys are familiar with Louis Simmons from Westside Barbell, he has the conjugate method. But it absolutely doesn't work for the other guy. 
the lifting just isn't there. There's no real conditioning in, in it. Um, the intensities are extremely high and the training sessions are very, very long. So to be honest, it, it doesn't work in our training. So I took the best of what I knew from uh, the conjugate method and renamed it the other guy conjugate method. It's really awesome. You focus on uh, some higher intensity lifts, meaning higher percentages uh, of your one rep max. And then you also focus on some dynamics, so some speed lifts and a lot of accessory work. But we're not just doing a repeat of last year. We're just starting there. So we're starting the first four weeks with OGC because it can help with some really fast PRs. So we're starting with OGC and then we're moving to mass gain. Uh, so it's going to be strength focused, but one way to really gain strength and to gain mass is just going to be volume. So then we're going to kick up the volume and then in the next two waves uh, to take us through the full 12 weeks. So you're going to see a, what would be equated to kind of like German volume training, lots of uh, 10 sets of 10 stuff like that. And it's going to really shake things up compared to what we have been doing. So I think this is going to be a really fun track to do. If you are looking to get stronger and build some muscle, then this is going to be the track for you. And we don't normally focus as much on mass or muscle gain in uh, strength because you can get stronger without having to gain any mass. But we also know sometimes to get stronger, you have to build a little bit more muscle. And that's what we're going to be working on. All right. So in the strength track, like I said, I, I laid it out plain and simple here. We build athletes. We want you to be an athlete. Uh, and if you have a body, you are an athlete. That's truly what we believe. And these are all the different areas that we train or would like to train inside of Garage Gym Athlete Programming. Now, not every track hits all these different areas, and I'll explain that as we go on. But we have what we call a major and a minor. And I'm going to explain that. So the major here is strength. Obviously, we're getting stronger, getting some mass. And then the minor would be gain, which is going to be like really short burst type conditioning stuff. So you think about uh, sprinting 10 to 15 seconds, 20 seconds here, some like burst style training. And the reason we do this is because it keeps you very conditioned. It doesn't burn you out basically at all. And it helps you in your strength gain. So we don't do a lot of uh, endurance training, anything like that. We don't want to do anything that hurts your strength gains on the strength track. Um, but to some degree, we have to keep you conditioned. We have to keep you uh, alive. We have to keep you, um, you know, and what I mean by alive is if you were to just be like a power lifter, I think that that's actually unhealthy over time because uh, you're just not exercising, you know, you're not conditioning as much as you should. So, what else are we focusing on? Now, the orange are kind of the, the secondary goals here. It will be strength speed. So like I, I mentioned in other guide, conjugate strength speed is just moving weight quickly. So moving still heavier loads, but moving it quickly, and then also strength endurance. So being able to uh, move to that mass cycle, there's a little bit more hypertrophy or muscle building work, which we would call strength endurance, which is just where you are able to do, you know, 10 sets of 10 pull-ups or 10 sets of 10 back squats, you know, at a specific load. And don't worry, we'll work you up to those things if that sounds ridiculous right now. Uh, that's definitely not where you start. That's why we're going from OGC, hopping into mass, and then even the mass will start at a moderate volume before we, we increase it. But you should really peak at the end of that 12-week cycle, uh, you know, basically a brand new human being. And I'm really excited about the strength track kicking off here in 2019. All right, now that I got the whole, all these details out of the way, strength, strength, speed, a lactic, strength, endurance, all these, these terms that don't matter to most people, what does it mean to you? You will get stronger and gain mass. You will become more powerful. You're going to become more powerful because we're going to focus on moving weight quickly. You'll hit PRs in the main lifts, and you will maintain and build necessary conditioning. So if you have some level of conditioning right now, you're going to maintain it through the conditioning we have in the strength track. And then you're going to build the necessary conditioning that you need. Uh, so if you're not conditioning at all as a strength athlete, you're really kind of, you know, screwing that up because you're only going to get so far. And I see this happen to strength athletes all the time is they, some people just want to be strong and they don't care about their conditioning. And that's actually their limiting factor. If you're not conditioned, you won't continually get strong for the rest of your life. You're going to hit plateau after plateau because your body is not functioning the way it should. Now, you won't be a fat and lazy powerlifter. 
I am sorry if I've offended anyone in the powerlifting community by that statement, but also not really because if you are, like I said, if you're not doing any conditioning and your answer to moving more weight is always eat more donuts, eat more carbohydrates, eat more fat, whatever, to gain mass so you can move more mass, I don't agree with that sentiment. And I don't think that it's necessary. I think that you can condition and still have a clean diet and still get crazy, crazy strong. And we won't master Olympic lifting. There will be some Olympic lifting in the strength track, but you're not going to walk out of this with like, you know, amazing snatch and clean jerks. Not what, not what we do. And then also all tracks are going to be the same. You won't train for more than an hour. We're very serious about our five block system and not and having you in and out of the gym with the most effective and efficient training session possible in under 60 minutes. And we're really doubling down on that here in 2019 because we've got some messages and some people saying, you know, my time's creeping up to an hour 10, stuff like that. We don't want that happening. We're very serious about those hour time windows. Uh, so we've made some tweaks to the training to make sure that that is constantly happening for you because that's a major promise that we want to deliver to our athletes so you can be in and out and on with your life while still seeing some major progress. All right, that is the strength track, guys. If you have any questions, throw them in the chat. Uh, Joe will get them to me uh, as we go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna answer them all at the end. But go ahead and you can throw them in there, and Joe will uh, make sure I see them all at the end. So let's uh, get going to Superhuman. I'm gonna take a quick sip of water, and then we will talk about Superhuman. All right, VD is on the webinar. I think he's still on. So he actually did all the programming for Shred, which I think is really cool. And the Shred track is functional body composition. So we don't call it functional bodybuilding. We don't call it, uh, you know, functional weight loss. It's just functional body composition is what the Shred track is all about. And yeah, there, there's VD in the chat. He's a superhuman, aka super pumped. So. And part of the reason I think uh, he, he said that he named it superhuman was because of there's a lot of supersets, what I, I think are great, phenomenal for what you're trying to do in shred. And so what are we going to focus on? Well, I kind of picked out his programming and looked out what he was doing. He's focusing on a lot of strength training, making sure that you're strong and strength endurance. And when I say strength endurance in this capacity, it's a lot of hypertrophy work. So muscle building type stuff. And then he also has you in that pain zone. So building that middle tier conditioning you know, like uh, 60, 90 second, 120 second efforts. Uh, that's that's where you're starting off in the the shred track. And I think that, to be honest, I've seen the programming that uh, VD is leading you guys through. And I think it is absolutely phenomenal. Um, you guys are going to have a lot of fun doing it because it's, it's a new perspective. And like I said, he's got a lot of supersets in there, a lot of really solid conditioning. All the math has worked out. It's some, it's one of the most solid training programs I've seen in a long time. And I think if you guys are on the shred track, uh, you're going to absolutely love it. So superhuman, lots of supersets, lots of conditioning. And I'll explain that more in a minute. Now, other things that VD has you focusing on more secondary is uh, some aerobic conditioning. So making sure that you're aerobic and mixed modal and mixed modal really is more of those, um, you could call them CrossFit style workouts where you're doing like three to four different exercises all back to back. But the way we do them is we typically have you attack, uh, you know, some, some work followed by some rest. That way you're actually building and not just running your head into a wall over and over. Uh, not really CrossFit style, but that's the best way to describe it most of the time. So a lot of mixed modal and some uh, aerobic conditioning going to be really, really fun this go around. So what does this mean to you on the shred track? You will get stronger. You will build muscle. You will gain top end and long form conditioning. So that gain zone that we're talking about for the, the energy system training, it's painful stuff, but it makes you an animal. Like you could, if you, if you suffer through those sessions properly and you do everything that's programmed, uh, there will be no physical event or feat that you are scared of after you master that energy system. Uh, so really awesome there. And then long form conditioning. I'm just talking about more aerobic stuff. You want to go for a 20 minute run, 30 minute run. You're going to have no problem there. And you're actually going to be pretty fast in the process. Now I say you will lose weight or gain muscle nutrition dependent. So going back to that analogy, uh, that I, I talked about how garage gym athlete is like a car, you know, we're, we're giving you the gas pedal. So shred would be your gas pedal, but you really need to take the reins on that steering wheel to make sure this is 
to make sure you meet your goals. This is functional body composition. So we have a lot of functional work. If you want to be at a caloric surplus, then you can gain muscle on the shred tract with the way VD has structured it. Can you lose weight? Absolutely. You need to be at a caloric deficit and you'll be able to lose weight. Uh, and, and the training is, is awesome. So I think that you just focus on the nutrition. Don't worry about what's happening next in the programming or going on next week. Just do it. And you focus on your nutrition and how, how that's going to go for you. And you are going to see some really awesome uh, results. Now, what won't we do in the shred track? You won't, we won't waste time on skill work. Uh, so I, I always joke around that we, we don't do a lot of skill work in our programming because I want you to meet your goals and not everybody wants to be able to walk on their hands, uh, and do all these different things. So the shred track is not going to have a lot of skill work in it. So just be mindful of that going into, if that's something you want to do, you won't train in every athletic domain. The shred has way more of a slanted focus and that is a functional body composition. So going back, I'll show you when we get to the hard to kill, going back to all of those different areas we train, the shred track's not going to hit every single one of those over the course of the 12 weeks. It's very slanted. It has a focus and we keep you in the training areas that you should be. And then lastly, you won't train for more than an hour. You know, I can hit this uh, every time on every track. You will not train for more than an hour because we are making sure of it in the programming. All right. I named my my track since I did this one hard to kill. I named it Better Human because VD went superhuman, and I'm just going Better Human uh, because, like I said, hard to kill track. We don't do um, we don't have a slanted focus most of the time, and I'll explain that as I as I show everything else. We we take a very broad view. It's uh you know no nonsense strength and conditioning, but it's general physical preparedness at the highest level that I know how to program and have been doing for a long time. And to be honest, if we were to flip back to several years ago, talking about three, four years ago, this kind of programming was experimental. And now having had thousands of athletes run through the programming, use it, not really experimental anymore. It works really well. And I think it's somewhere about 60, somewhere between 60 and 70% of our athletes are on the hard to kill track uh, because it just works so well. And we're going to continue that and make sure that we are helping you see results. All right, so what are we going to be focusing on at the start of Hard to Kill? We're going to be focusing on strength, speed, and mixed modal training. So strength, speed, we're going to be moving some weights quickly, and we're going to be going pretty fast. So uh, you know, you'll see some kettlebell snatches, some cleans, some jerks, things like that. We're going to work on that for the first four weeks and also be doing a lot of mixed modal training. So like I said, it's kind of CrossFit, but this is way more grunt work type stuff. So you're going to be doing some grunt work with some longer form conditioning, uh, you know, 30 minute, 40 minute Metcons. We've done some of this stuff in the past, but we're changing it up to make sure that we're hit, hitting up both areas of mixed modal training, which is mixed modal aerobic and mixed modal anaerobic. I'm not going to get into all the details of that. Uh, but let me show you something that's really cool about kind of all the tracks combined and then also hard to kill. So if you're wondering, okay, is he going to explain all this in no gear track and then also the three block track? Well, the three block track follows hard to kill track programming. So what we've done is we've taken the best, what you need to do from hard to kill and put it into three block. And then we add a little bit here and there, made sure the warmups made sense, cooldowns made sense, everything makes sense. Um, and then that's where three blocks. So three block is following the same direction and goals as hard to kill. And that's also true for no gear. So if you're ever wondering, okay, well, what, what's the focus of these? We, we do GPP at the highest level, general physical preparedness at the highest level with three block and no gear, just like hard to kill. So they follow the same, like where those green circles are, they follow the same goals and they follow the same overall broad view of getting you better. And in as many different areas as we possibly can. Boom, you know, the whole screen just lot lit up. So uh, we do focus every on every single area that we think you should train as a human being or athlete. So that includes strength, strength, speed, speed, which is just like running, moving quickly, muscle endurance, strength endurance, power endurance, and then sustained pain and gain, which is oxidative, lactic, and alactic conditioning. So what do, do I mean by, by you know all these different areas? How are we hitting them all? Well, over the course of 30 days in the hard to kill track, we're going to focus on the strength, speed, and mixed modal training. That's where we'll focus most of our time. But over the course of 30 days, you will do 
a workout and some form of conditioning or strength training that involves every single other area that we think is important to train as an athlete. So there are a lot of pros to this because it's going to make you extremely well-rounded. You're going to hit every single area. The only con to this is your results in hard to kill are probably a little bit slower than shred or strength because they're so laser focused on doing one or two things over the course of 12 weeks. We're trying to make sure that a couple areas are getting built up really heavily. And then we're going to balance the athlete out in all these other different strength areas, endurance areas, and conditioning areas. Uh, so your, your results come a little bit more slowly. If you are a dedicated person and you're okay with like, let's do 12 weeks, let's do 24 weeks, let's do a year of garage gym athlete training. Hard to kill track is a great place to be because you are going to hit so many different areas. And if you're going to be with us for the long term, hard to kill, I do think is the place to be, or, you know, switching back and forth. We have a lot of athletes who've been with us for a couple of years. They want to get stronger for a little while. They go get strong. They come back. Uh, they do hard to kill. And, and they switch between tracks. I think it's all great guys, but this is kind of the main difference between hard to kill as we balance everything out. Uh, and like I said, there are pros and cons to that. So you'll become functional and well-rounded, very, very functional. That's what that AF stands for. You will equally improve strength and conditioning slowly. Again, slowly. I'm making sure that that is known. So you're going to get stronger. You're going to get faster. You get more conditioned. But if you're looking for a quick win PR on the barbell back squat, go to the strength track. If you're looking to drop five pounds or gain five pounds of muscle and you want the training that's going to help you do that and you're going to dial in your nutrition, and you want that to happen quickly, go to the shred track. If you want to equally improve in strength and conditioning, you know that, that means your back squat's going up, your mile time's going down, but you're okay with that happening over a you know four, eight-week time period, then let's go on the hard-to-kill track. You will do grunt work and you will PR. So I've never really seen someone putting in, you know, 100% consistency on the hard to kill track and not PRing a couple of things uh, at the end. So you will PR in the hard to kill track, just hands down. I've basically been on, I have been on the hard to kill track since Garage Gym Athlete started several years ago, and I've PR'd basically everything. Uh, and the only reason I don't switch is just because I'm very happy with where I'm at. Uh, but every time we do a new cycle, I always say I'm thinking about switching and I don't know, I, I'm, I'm actually torn right now, but I, I'm not sure which direction I'm going to go yet. So you also will uh, lose weight or gain muscle slowly. So nothing like the shred track. We're not trying to do something in, in, you know, four weeks, eight weeks. We're trying to do it over the course of 12 weeks. If you want to lose, you know, five to seven pounds and you want to dial in your nutrition over the course of 12 weeks, because maybe you don't have a lot to lose, or maybe you want to gain five to 10 pounds of muscle over the course of 12 weeks. And you want to do that slowly, hard to kill track can still get you there. You just need to focus on the nutrition and make sure you're consistent with our training. So we won't overly focus in one area as, as you saw, saw like we don't do, I mean, we hit up a lot of different areas. We have a, a major that we want you to get better at each four weeks over the 12 week cycle. Uh, but we won't focus too much in any one area. And if you have program or training ADD, which I know a lot of people do, hard to kill track might also be for you because you're kind of doing something new all the time. Uh, and it's good for you. Like I said, pros and cons to that. And again, we won't train for more than an hour if you're on the hard to kill track proper. Now, three block track, you won't train for more than 30 minutes, period, dot. So I'm going to explain that a little bit more. But if you are on the three block track, you're thinking about it, you will not. Uh, train for more than 30 minutes. And I'm 100% 100% serious about that. So what we've done, uh, let me talk about three block for a second. So the three block track, there's a few things that you need to know about it. So first, we're talking about from block zero, the warm up to putting in the work to doing the cool down should take you 30 minutes. So that means we've only structured in the training that absolutely matters. So the strength sets that matter, the conditioning workouts that matter over the course of a week. So the entire thing should never take you more than 30 minutes, period. So if you are really pressed for time, but want to get in some solid training, maybe you are a seasoned or veteran athlete, you know, uh, you know, just, you know, you, you, you have some conditioning, you have some strength, but you are like, you know what, I'm going to maintain, uh, go on these three block track. It, it will be a great way to stay in maintenance zones. And then even if you're working up to our training, maybe you're not really ready to be on hard to kill. Like hard to kill sounds awesome for you, but you did like three work workouts in an hour and you're like, 
man, that was really tough. Maybe I should go three block. Three block is a great place to start. So there will be 30 minutes worth of training and it's going to be great. Now, some people are going to say, okay, what if I want to be on the shred track? Okay. I want to be on the shred track, but today I only have 30 minutes. What do I do? So I'm going to explain this. I'm not going to show you because we don't actually have it live yet, but inside the team builder app that we use for garage gym athlete programming, there's a little section in there that says, and I, I'm pulling up my phone right now just so I don't lead you in any wrong direction. So when I pull up my team builder, it lo lands me on the workout page. In the bottom right-hand corner, I can hit more, and then a few other documents, pop, a few links pop up, and you hit documents and links. In there, you'll see Garage Gym Athlete Frequently Asked Questions, Garage Gym Athlete Resources, how to submit the PR shirt, and then also track changes. If you didn't know that was there, you do now. It's a really great resource for doing the PR shirt, changing the track that you're on, and, and getting any of your questions answered. But what you'll see come January when the new cycles drop is you'll see a couple of weeks of PDFs in there that will be three block. That way, if you're ever crunched for time or you're in some sort of situation where, you know what, I can only do three blocks worth of training today, you're just going to pop open the documents and links, grab a three block workout if that's all you can fit in that day do it and then you can hop back on the track tomorrow when you have more time the normal track uh, instead of having to switch or do dual tracks that'll be the easiest way for you to access it and get going get back to your training after that fact now last thing i want to hit on track changes in general um if you want to change change your track after you watch this webinar you've answered some questions You'll see the sample training that we email out tomorrow. When we email out all the sample training tracks, we're going to send out a bunch of PDFs. You can look at them and comb through them. You'll see the full entire first week of our programming for next year. And after you decide, wait till next week before you submit your track change because it's not going to matter if you submit a track change now or soon because everyone's doing fit week. Every single track is doing fit week next week. So it really doesn't matter uh, if, you, if you submit a track change or request or anything. So wait till next week. And then that is the best time to, uh, to, 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 uh, change tracks. All right. Now, last thing, and then I'm going to get to questions. So fit week, we have some changes to fit week, fit week. When we first started was one week and we shoved a bunch of stuff in there, but we found the results weren't as good as they could be. So we spread it out over two weeks, but then the feedback we were getting, uh, you know, Two weeks of testing is a long time, and it's also, if you're doing it a lot, it's a long time to be away from training. So Fit Week is officially going back to only being one week of training. But what we've done is we removed some lifts that we don't really train as much. We've combined some things, and I'm going to actually show you what that is real quick. So it's only one week. So next week is your Fit Week. And what I want you to do, my advice for you, change that mindset. Come Sunday night, like, look, guys, no alcohol this weekend. Like, get serious. Like, Fit Week should be your Super Bowl every time it comes around. Like, look, guys, you know, I'm not drinking any beer right now or this week. I'm not going to eat crappy foods. I'm going to get my sleep. Fit Week is where you drop the training mentality, the, the less is more, the let's be smarter. No, we're just going hard. We're going hard. We're going to be safe. We're going to be safe and have good form with everything. We're not going to sacrifice our form to try and hit a PR. But Fit Week is it. Now it's only a couple of days that you need to stay laser focused and dialed in and hit these PRs. So hopping into it, the new Fit Week. This is what it's going to look like on Monday. You're going to hit back squat, strict press, and uh, for for your two lifts, hitting some PRs there. And then it's going to be 500 meter row or 400 meter run. Let me get some water real quick. So it's not going to be both. You're going to select either. Okay. Because we're training the same energy system. We used to train, used to test both. Now we're only training one. So it's going to be either a 500 meter row or a 400 meter run. You get to pick. Maybe maybe you choose, have to choose based off of equipment. Maybe you're better at one than the other. Doesn't matter. That's what we're going to do. Day two, you're going to do push jerk. You're going to do pull ups and dips and a 1.5 mile run. You can break this up however you want, guys. If you want to break it up into a morning and evening session or just knock them all out back to back, it'll still fit in the blocks. But if you want to save a little in the tank, you can break it up. Day three, we're going to do front squat and clean, and that is it for that day. So rest as much as you want to, uh, you know, hit those PRs, and that, that they all have athlete briefs explaining way more than I am right now. You see the athlete br briefs at the top, and we always have the athlete brief. Uh, but that's all you're doing that day. Then you would rest today, completely rest, and then you'd go to Friday. 
We're going to do a deadlift, one rep max, and then a 2,000 meter row or run for time. Now, it's, I'm say either or because if you have never been rowing, then you can just hit the, uh, the you can just run and you will have a 2,000 meter run time as, as, a, uh, as a metric for you. And then Saturday, uh, the, this Meet Yourself Saturday, I normally say Meet Yourself Saturdays are optional, but one thing that we do test is the EO3 5K. It's one of my favorite workouts. So it's a 5K with a crap ton of calisthenics in there. Um, really fun. So that is your Meet Yourself Saturday, and that is going to be the testing. That is going to be Fit Week, guys, and that's it. So again, go in with the right mentality, rolling off rolling off of uh, you know this week, get some rest over the weekend, and then roll into next week. Uh, really hitting it. That's the 17th through the 22nd. And then that week after that, we're going to do some, basically some baseline, some throttle back uh, training before we hit it hard with the new cycles. Uh, And the reason we're doing that is because there's a lot more benchmarks this week. So I don't want anyone to fry their CNS. So central nervous system, like trying to hit a bunch of PRs and do it going as hard as they can for a full week. And then rolling into a hardcore cycle, you know, starting off because we don't normally start, you know, easy right at the start of a new cycle. So we're going to throttle back that next week, hit some some more baselines, reduce our training load. This is kind of a recovery from fit week. That's the last week of the year. And then the 31st is a Monday. Boom. Starting the new training cycles. And then after that, you go full on beast mode for January in which you are going to be tracking your protein and water, hitting your training and becoming a better freaking human being. All right, guys, what questions do you have? I'm going to hop over to the section where Joe throws that in for me. All right. I don't see too many. I think Joe has answered most of them in the chat. Uh, So will OGC work well? So the other guy conjugate on the strength track, will it work well with having a powerlifting meet February 2nd? Would I be peaking at the point I'm competing? So actually that would work out really great. And I'm not just saying that, Jason. The reason I think OGC would work for a powerlifting meet happening February 2nd is because you're going to be doing a lot of accessory work and you know the conjugate method all of January. And we're going to end that week with a deload. The, the, so the last week of January, you'd still be lifting, but it'd be a deload, which is perfect to roll into right at the beginning of February after a, a slight deload into trying to peak and hit PRs. So I think that is a great, uh, a great way to go about it. All right. So it looks like Joe answered a lot of the questions. The new cycle does start on the 31st. Um, I know a lot of people uh, want to know about the, yeah, the, the new cycle. Like what can I look at the training? Yes, absolutely. So next week or not next week tomorrow. So Friday, uh, we will be sending out all the training PDFs and giving you access to those so you can comb through them. Like I said, look at three block, look at hard to kill, look at strength, and really decide. But like I said earlier in the webinar, really answer the big picture questions first, guys. What do you need to do? You know, how, where are you going to have the most fun? What do you need to achieve? Will you actually arrive at your destination? You know, answer those questions first before you decide where to train. All right, I think that's it. Let me check one more time. Yeah, pretty easy question. Not a lot of questions today, guys. So I'm going to wrap this up and just letting you know, I am super excited and pumped for 2019. Uh, I really want to get after it with the uh, protein and water challenge. So I'm going to be really pestering you guys, especially in the Facebook group and over social media to keep up with that challenge. Because anytime you have to do something for a full 30 days, it's difficult. But this isn't some cut out all carbohydrates. This isn't some crazy thing. Like I know a lot of people like to do that stuff at the new year, right? It's like, okay, you know what? It's a new year. We're going to take on 15 new habits. I'm going to change the diet. I'm going to change the workout. I'm going to get new shoes. I'm going to do this. I'm going to set these financial goals. I'm going to be amazing. A lot of people do that. Never works. So what I'm asking you to do, be consistent in our training, track your protein and water. That's it. That's it. I don't want you to do anything crazy. I don't want you to you know, get on a new plan or completely change your nutrition structure. That's it, guys. And I know it's going to work out for you in a major, major way. All right, I'm going to sign off. Thank you so much for being here today. And I will see you guys around training.